Uh, okay, so we are dealing with uh, <clears throat> point estimation. Now, what is estimation? Really? So we have a population here. And two star, right? And uh, so there are different ways to approach uh, this study. One of them is uh, assuming that this population has certain uh, distribution. So we can say that this population has normal distribution. Uh, so in the sense we are choosing a normal distribution from from. Uh, set of normal distributions, say. Or you can say it has a like blah blah distribution, depending on the situation and depending on your experience in choosing distributions, you can come up with something. And uh, there are so many. In fact, you can just look at, uh, just uh, check online and see uh, there are, wow, a lot. Uh, uh, but anyways, now, but what? We choose a distribution, and this distribution has certain uh, parameters. So let's call the parameters like theta. Usually it's denoted by theta in uh, statistics. Now, this theta can be just one parameter. For example, uh, if you have exponential, then we have lambda, one parameter. If we have normal, then we have two parameters. Okay, so it can be more than that. That is depending on the situation. Uh, on the distribution, more can be more. Now, we will see that. But uh, anyway, now, the, how can we, I mean, when we choose a distribution from, say, normal, for example, we choose a distribution here. We say that x is, uh, x is this thing, so x, what is x? Let me say that, for example, if this is my sample set, sample space, and x will be, uh, uh, say, random variable rv, and uh, this rv is uh, measuring something, so it's like measuring the age of population, right? It's measuring, measuring something, we will see in examples. Uh, and then we say that this x and the rv that we have chosen uh, has certain distribution. For example, we say that it is normal with some unknown mu and sigma squared. Not unknown, well, if we know this and this, then we are done, right? So, what are, uh, oh, no, the way that we approach it here, that's a point estimation, which we have over, her, over there is uh, uh, somehow, somehow estimate uh, this one or this one or both of them. Uh, but how? One way is this. One way is saying, okay, now we choose uh, some uh, a sample of size, some certain size, size n, say, uh, from this population and study that sample size. I mean, the sample. So, uh, we, have, we have done it. I mean, it's, it's like the first thing that comes into mind. You can, when, if, if you're studying the age, you can say, okay, let's choose some, a sample of like 20 and uh, find the age of those 20 and uh, find the average. And that's the, the closest that you can get to the average of the whole population. Now, the population might be a few thousand. So. Uh, and in fact, that's correct. That's what really happens, and we will see. So, point estimation here is somehow using the sample to estimate parameters of of distribution. So, one we choose a distribution for x. X. Two, using sampling v 
the estimate the parent and its one of two distribution. The parent is on the chosen distribution. Okay, so first we choose a distribution and then we use sampling. We estimate the parameters of the chosen distribution. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Say you are checking, so let's say example. So you are given a population of like a certain object, say some mechanical object, some uh, given uh, warehouse of some mechanical object. Some object, say. And uh, we want to see if what is the probability that uh, randomly selected object is defective. Okay, so in some warehouse there are some objects. Uh, the computer saying something laptops and uh, we want to find the probability of a randomly selected object is defective right so how do we do that uh, like the warehouse might have like thousands of uh, like those laptops say uh, how do you do that you uh, choose a certain number of them uh, sample sample so so what, what you do is this, uh, choose a sample of something of n objects and let x be the number of defective ones. And then what will you do? Just uh, common sense. You just say, okay, if this is uh, this probability is this, then we just say p is simply this x over m. Right? That's just common sense. So that is common sense. Oh, okay. Now, well, let's see. Well, what do we have here? This x is in fact uh, uh, a copy of uh, this. So if this is the warehouse, remember when you are sampling, you are in fact uh, copying that. And this is a warehouse and this is uh, uh, either you know, a success or failure. Okay? Not defective and defected, right? You can say that this is zero and one, something like that. So this is our, this is a, a, a binomial, right? Isn't that a binomial? So that's a binomial distribution, right? We are dealing with the binomial. So x is what? x is uh, in fact binomial uh, with uh, sample size n, I mean uh, n trials and uh, p 
probability of success. So, and what are we trying to find? We are trying to find this P, right? Uh, so what we do is we just check. We have a sample size of n, and we uh, calculate. We find the number of defective ones and divide that by n, and say that's it. That's our best approximation for p. So let's find this. This is uh, let's call it p hat. Usually they call it p hat or p tailed. Uh, but uh, I'm in the textbook we are using, here's this p hat, that's okay. So this is the approximation. That one we don't know to find. This one to find. This one is estimate. So that's an estimate to p. But there's another phenomenon happening here. That, that's just interesting. You see, this p itself is a random variable in a sense, because this x changes the number of, uh, the, you can't just do it uh, again and again, choose another n object, and uh, then uh, it might change. So this is like a random variable. So we can talk about e of this. In fact, the, the re another reason that it's a random variable is because this x is random variable. So x divided by n, n is just a fixed number, so x is a random variable and n is a fixed number, so this guy here is a random variable. So let's find this expected value, Expe expected value of this, or the average of this. So it is the average of x over n, and we know that this is like 1 over n, average of x. And what is average of x? Remember from binomial, binomial, uh, the average is np, so it is 1 over n times np, so it is p. So what have we found? That the average of this p hat is p, it, which means just uh, choose n, find the average, choose n, find the average, choose n, samples, find the average, and do it again and again and again, and you find uh, a uh, some, uh, I mean, uh, some numbers for this p, p hat, some uh, 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 in, instances for this p, uh, p hat. Then if you add them and divide by the number, so if you do this experiment like 10,000 times, just whatever, divide by that number of times that you have done it, and then you will get uh, uh, some, so add them and divide and you will get some p hat. And that's the average, that's the expected value. Expected, expected value means the average. So you do the experiment again and again and again and again, then find the average of these p hats. And uh, this is telling me that uh, the average of this p hat is in fact p, which means that this gets closer and closer as you do it again and again and again and find the average, it, the, 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 your average is getting closer and closer to the real average or the real, say, P, the average of these, uh, gets closer and closer to uh, the unknown, that probability P. So, and we say that if, if this happens, if the average of what you are finding on your estimate, if the average of your estimate, which is a random variable, is equal to what you are estimating, then we say that this is an unbiased estimate. Unbiased estimate. Right? So if E of P hat or E of whatever we are estimating equals what uh, E of uh, your estimate equals what you are estimating, then we say that it is an unbiased estimate. Okay. So, for binomial, that's what you do. If that was like in the warehouse, you choose n, a sample of size n, find this p hat, which is just the number of, say, defected divided by n, number of defected divided by n, 
and do it again and again and again and again and you find p hats and add them and divide by the number of times you have done it and that's the expected value and this expected value theoretically gives you p so you can say that you have found p uh, well you might even do it one time that's that's okay and that one time you can say okay that is a, a sample of this but uh, uh, it is it should be very close to p so you, we will see that in uh, the other the other uh, estimation method that's like interval estimation uh, that that's another way another way where you can say where it lies anyway so so we are uh, we are doing this, and we are trying to make this happen. So, uh, so you might come up with some idea and say, okay, now I will estimate this P using this method, using this algorithm. And in the end, uh, if you are able to find the expected value of what you are estimating as a that's random variable, if that expected value equals what you are estimating, then your method uh, has a good given an unbiased estimation of uh, what you are estimating. Okay, now, let's look at another example. This was a, say, example for binomial. Remember binomial was like the very first distribution that we usually discuss. Now, another distribution is uniform distribution. Okay, so uh, this, this is in fact a, a classical example. So you have a population. What is your population? Your population is uh, say, uh, how should I say that? Maybe it's not. Uh, let me say that you have a uh, the stopping time, the stopping time of a certain car. So when you brake, or is that called stopping time? Whatever. So let's say stopping time after brake. So stopping time after brake. Now your population is not this. Your population, in fact, is uh, the cars. Okay, and X is. Uh, uh, like uh, x uh, gives any every car certain number, and that is uh, the stopping time after braking. So uh, we can say that x, which is uh, the stopping time, so x is the stopping time. So these are the cars, and stopping time x goes to r. Stopping time now. Uh, we uh, we need some distribution for this. So we say that if uh, the maximum stopping time, let's say theta, let theta be maximum stopping time. Okay. Then we say that x is uh, uniform on zero theta. Which means that for any car, x of that car is a number between 0 and theta, and it's uniform. Which means it can be any number between 0 and theta. So, this makes sense to assume that the stopping time of the cars is a uniform, uh, is, has the uniform distribution between 0 and theta, and theta is the maximum stopping time. Uh, so, it doesn't go further than theta. Now, this, it seems that this, this guy here has some, uh, say, parameter. So what is the parameter here? Parameter is theta. Parameter is theta. So what should be theta hat? So that the expected value of theta hat, in fact, is theta. That's what we are 
uh, trying to find. So the parameter is theta to estimate. So to estimate theta. That's the maximum stopping time. So that's the maximum stopping time. And uh, we have data on cars, and uh, that's not a huge data, data set, and uh, we want to estimate the maximum stopping time by just choosing a sample here, say, something like that. So, uh, let's see. So what we do is this. Uh, let me uh, write here. So we have a, so choose a sample of size, say, x1 up to x, and we know that each xi is in fact like x, right? Each xi is a copy of x, remember the sampling? The principle was that a uh, sample is like an IID, uh, independent and identically distributed, and uh, the distribution is the same as the distribution of that X that we are just studying. So each XI is in fact uniform zero theta. Okay, and then we say, okay, so this is our sample, and this sample is like what? Remember that this sample was like n computers, and these n computers choose from uh, certain uh, say population and find so these, these computers choose cars here n cars and find the stopping time and give it to you and find another one give it to you find another one so at each stage they are finding some uh, stopping times now what would be your estimate for this data you say okay why well, not this data is the, ma the the real maximum stopping time. But I don't have the, the, the whole data in hand, so what I do is uh, I have a sample of size n, so I just go with this. So I just go with uh, uh, the maximum of this thing. So it makes sense just intuitively to say, uh, why not? Why not saying that theta hat, which estimates theta, is in fact maximum of these xi's, x1, x2. Which means what? Which means your computers, n computers, you have n computers, and these n computers choose cars and find maximum stopping time, and then you choose the maximum here, right? So you have x1 up to xn. They, each one of them finds, a, say, a maximum stopping time for a certain number that it has chosen. So it gives you some number here, some number here, some number, 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 and you find the maximum of these things. So that's like x1, x2, up to a small xn. Then you find maximum of the x, these xi's, the xi's, these small xi's. So that's the, uh, that's the first trial, second trial, again, you find x1, blah, 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 then maximum x1, xi, and so on. So you do it again and again and again, and you have some maximums here. And so you will say, okay, as a random variable, these are like uh, values taken by this, right? These are the values taken by theta. So you do it again and again and again and again, the value for this. Again, 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 value for this and so on. So your theta hat is a random variable which takes some values, which at each uh, stage or at each uh, trial you uh, give, uh, assign something to this by finding the maximum of these numbers. Uh, now we want to see what this thing is. What is the expected value of this thing? Expected value of theta. And we ask this question, is this equal to theta? If it equals to theta, then it is an unbiased, uh, say, estimation. So let me do, uh, say that we want to find uh, that uh, theta, which is the maximum stopping time for all cars that we have in our sample space. And uh, uh, to find that, we choose n cars. And uh, say we find maximum 
say stop in time and uh, then uh, find the maximum of those. And that we say, okay, that is in fact our uh, best estimate for the theta, which is the maximum stopping time of all the cars. So, let's find the, to find this thing, we need a distribution for this thing. So, we need distribution of x hat. We need distribution of uh, theta hat. Okay, so let's find distribution of theta hat, and from that distribution we can find its expected value. So this is in fact an interesting uh, problem, finding the distribution. Uh, so we have theta hat is maximum of this thing, x1 and theta x2. Now we, we should find the CDF. So the CDF of this, so let's say CDF of, of this uh, f of y is probably that theta hat is less than equal to some y, right? So that's the CDF. If we can find CDF, then uh, the derivative of that CDF is the PDF, and we can use the PDF to find expected value of theta hat. Uh, now this theta hat less than y is in fact equal to this is maximum of these, so that is uh, x1 less than equal to y and x2 less than equal to y and up to xn less than equal to y. Right? That's equivalent. Equivalent, uh, these two are equivalent. Saying that the maximum is less than y is like saying that each one of them is less, less than y. Right? That's, uh, these two statements are equivalent. So this is equivalent to this logically. So we can say probability of this equals the probability of those uh, of, of that thing over there. Uh, but the xi's are independent. Xi's are independent. Independent. So this equals uh, each one of them. P of x1 less than y times P of x2 less than y up to the last one, p of xn less than equal to y. But remember, if xi was a uniform zero theta. So let's find one of them, because they are the same, all the same. They're all the same, right? All the same. Because they are the same, the xi's are the same. So p of xi less than or equal to y is the same as p of, p of xj less than or equal to y. So they are all the same. So let's find one of them. p of xi less than or equal to y. Uh, what is the, uh, the... Okay, this is in fact 0 to y. And let's assume that y is less than theta anyway. And uh, that is 1 over theta dx. So what I find is y over theta. The, the integral is in fact uh, x over theta from 0 to y, which is y over theta. So what happens then, so this gives me f y is in fact y over theta times y over theta. How many times? n times. So that is y to power n, theta to power n. Okay, so I have found uh, the CDF of uh, this uh, random variable theta hat, the maximum, and uh, so I can now find the PDF. So this is the CDF, and the PDF is in fact the derivative of this. Thing. So. Let's find the derivative of this, and that is my PDF. So let me uh, erase this thing and write this up here. So we found that this is in fact y n over theta n. So the PDF is the derivative of this f prime at 
y, which is n, y n minus 1 over theta. Okay, now we have the PDF. Uh, uh, let's call this thing uh, f y. Now, what is expected value of theta hat? So, uh, that is in fact integral uh, from zero to theta, say, because that's over from zero to theta, and then we have y times this thing, the fy. fy is n, y and minus one over theta n dy. Remember that was like, uh, if I put y instead, I can put theta here, but so theta hat, then this will be theta hat. So I just said, uh, it's like saying that this is y, it's like saying that, no, in fact, this is theta. That's why I use y here. It's easier than using theta hat, put theta hat here and theta hat here, and d theta hat. Uh, anyway, so no, no difference, that's just the done value. And uh, so we have yn over theta n dy, and n is out, so Let's write it again so you don't get confused what happened. Uh, and I have, uh, what's that? Yn over theta n dy. So that is n over theta n times 1 over n plus 1, y n plus 1 from 0 to theta. So, I have n over n plus 1, right, uh, times 1 over theta n, times uh, theta n plus 1, so that is n over n plus 1 theta. So I found that uh, the expected value of theta had, in fact, is something else, is not theta. So let me write it up here that, uh, uh, let's erase this thing. So we found that this theta hat that we then said, so we said theta hat is maximum of the xi's. And we found that the expected value of theta hat is in fact n over n plus 1 theta, and this is less than theta, why? Because this number is less than 1. So that is uh, less than theta. So it is not, in fact, the same as theta. How can we remedy this thing? Hmm? If I multiply this by n plus 1 over n, then uh, that gives me the correct form, right? So, not this theta is not unbiased. Or let's say it is biased. But how can I make this unbiased? Well, simply, uh, since I have n over n plus 1, then n plus 1 over n uh, this theta hat, which is n plus 1 over n maximum of xi's, is then an unbiased estimator. We call it estimator, but we, because that's a random variable and uh, uh, the estimates are parent, parent we are looking for. So if we change that into n plus 1 over n times maximum value of x1 up to xn, then uh, that is uh, definitely this is, uh, you see, let, let's find it. So e of n plus 1 over n theta hat is n plus 1 over n 
e of theta hat, which is over there, n plus 1 over n times n over n plus 1 theta, which is theta. That's why I multiply by n plus 1 over n. So, uh, for this situation, uh, we found an estimator for that data, which is the maximum uh, stopping time for those that population of cars, say, and uh, so in both cases, uh, the, the, the binomial and this uniform, you uh, we use what we uh, use the, the distribution that we have assumed for this, and uh, we also have used the. Uh, sample size, the end. In both cases, the sample size is somewhere there, which you should expect. It has to do with sample size. Okay. Now, the previous one was uh, 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 that P, in fact, is some kind of average, so we, 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 we had to find the average of something. This is like maximum, so uh, we come up with something which looks like that maximum, so we say maximum. Uh, let's see another uh, another one that we have to, which probably is more important than this, is uh, normal distribution. And what we have uh, here for normal distribution. So if x uh, is normal, and mu and sigma squared. Then uh, we want to estimate uh, uh, one of them. So that uh, let's see. So let x one be a sample of size n. So when I say X, I really mean the population behind that. So now to, uh, we want to estimate mu first mu. So what is uh, mu hat? So what would you do to find mu? When you have a sample of, uh, what would you do? Just uh, just take an example that you're uh, trying to study the age of certain population. You choose n, a sample of size n, and find the age, and then divide it by n. I mean, add them and divide by n. So uh, let's do that. Let's do that here. Add that. Add the ages and divide by the number of sample sample points. So, uh, is this is a legit estimate? Right? These XIs are the ages of those students or the, 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 those people in that population. And each one of them, when you realize that, uh, that will give you a point. Uh, so, a number, say, and when you add those numbers and divide by the number of sample points, that is the average, right? So, you say, okay, maybe this is, a, in fact, a good one for me. Intuitively, it is quite good, in fact. But well, let's find uh, its expected value. If the expected value is a mu, then I'm done. Now, uh, let's uh, go back here. Uh, this, this means that what? This means that each x i is exactly x, and x is s. So let's uh, find expected value of mu. Oh, gee, why is that? Is that? Okay. The expected value of this mu hat. We know expected value commutes with sum, so it just goes inside the sum. Expected value of x equal to x i. Okay. So, we have uh, 
EX I is what? It's like EX. EX is what? Mu. So I have 1 over L. How many EXs do I have? Mu plus mu plus mu. How many times? N times. Right? So I have 1 over N times N mu, which is mu. Right? So that is fantastic. So in fact, the thing which intuitively makes sense, in fact, statistically also gives me this. So mu hat is an unbiased estimate. So mu hat is an unbiased estimate of mu. Okay. Uh, so that is for uh, mu. How about sigma square? So you might say, oh, okay, what was the uh, sigma squared itself? Sigma squared was uh, uh, expected value of what? It was expected value of x minus mu squared. So maybe if we just do the same thing, uh, we can find, I think we can, uh, so we have s squared, and we say, okay, this is expected value, which is average, so I have n, uh, so, the sample is uh, y equals x1 dot dot xn, sample of size n. And then we say, okay, let's do the same thing. 1 over n, sigma, x minus mu hat, in fact, squared. And uh, so you say that the, you, we say that this is like our estimate, okay? So, okay, so let's see. Uh, how can I find, I mean, I need what? I need E of S square. And I need this to be equal to sigma squared. So in the end, I need this to equal to sigma squared. Uh, the answer is no, it is not in fact sigma squared. There should be, it should be, there should be some modifications here to give me sigma squared. But what is that modification? So first of all, we have to find this and see what fraction of sigma squared that is, or is it in fact sigma squared? It might give you something else. But uh, since we have x squared here, so we expect that to be uh, related to sigma squared. Uh, so the answer is no, but uh, I will discuss this in the next, uh, say, lecture and also other things. So let me uh, stop the lecture here and leave this to you. Try to find the expected value of x squared from this. You can expand this thing and see what happens, or may maybe even do some tricks. But there is a trick here, so. Uh, okay, so let me uh, stop at this point and uh, continue and uh, try to find the expected value of that s squared that I defined. And in fact, we change the s squared. This is the s squared, is not this. This is some small change uh, that gives me an unbiased estimate for sigma squared. Okay.